Hey guys, one of our viewers by the name of Ernst from Brisbane, Australia shared a rapture dream. And this rapture dream had taken place during the week of the Revelation 12 sign. It just seemed like a now dream that, and we just wanted to share it with you. In fact, Susie liked it so much that she wanted to share it with you guys. Hi, everyone. This rapture dream that Ernst shared was so exciting. And so I want to share it right now. Um, Ernst said, I had a rapture dream a few years ago. I was in a home group and white lightning filled the sky around the house, light streaming through all the windows and in through uh, without thinking, we all immediately stood up, raised our arms, and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. We then rose up through the clouds to above the atmosphere. I was so happy and grateful. As we ascended through the clouds, I also saw some 50s-style spaceships filled with the wealthy trying to outsmart God's judgment. But lightning hit them, and they crashed back to earth. Angels gathered us together above the earth, and we were transported to heaven. As the clouds parted on arrival, I saw stunningly perfect mountainsides covered in manicured gardens and mansions and homes. We gathered together in a feast, being seated with friends. As I was being seated, I asked an angel, so what's it like being an angel? He gave me a happy knowing look and said, I fought on the right side. As I sat down and started talking to friends, I then woke up. I was devastated because I thought it was real. Anyhow, please don't take any details as gospel, but it is encouraging nonetheless. Ernst finished by saying, Jesus comes soon. We love you. Amen. Praise God. Thank you for sharing that, Ernst. Guys, you can be praying for Susie and me. We got thunder going on. We got tornado watches going on, and we got the pack in here with us. That's the big dog and the two kitty boys. They just ain't liking it. But guys, we're gonna make a video anyway. Hallelujah. We're going to try to have a communion video out Sunday. The, I think it's the 6th. And Susie may have a message, uh, Lord willing. That's providing the rapture doesn't happen and we're physically able. Amen? Amen. But, uh, guys, I, I like the part uh, concerning the mention of alien spaceships in uh, Ern's rapture dream because we all know that Satan will use that kind of deception to deceive the masses from believing a God-ordained rapture had taken place. And we've heard mention of some of the wealthy going up in spacecrafts, you know, I mean... Here last couple yeah, of years. But, yeah, but, but Satan probably going to use uh, alien abduction and I don't know what all. No telling. But guys, in this present time, there are signs of the times that are literally jumping off the pages of the Bible. I mean, there's no... If hands or butts about it, guys. Amen. There are wars and rumors of war taking place. There are earthquakes and all kinds of worldwide turmoil going on everywhere and all at the same time. Yes. Guys, it, how much more proof do we need? Amen. For those of you that are rapture weary, I'm here to tell you it ain't going to be long. So no, get out not. of the mully grub. Crawl out of the mully grubs. Guys, we're, we're going to go. And, and drag out your Bibles and stay in the Word and stay in prayer. We live a life of victory until we're raptured out of here. Amen. You know, I'm going to share uh, just a bit of how Satan deceives so many. And I want to talk about what the devil wants to take from you and me. And, and you know what? We don't want to do what the devil wants. So let's Amen. listen closely. We but want to do what God wants. If, if Satan wants something from me, I certainly do not want to give it to him. Amen. 
But guys, we love you. And uh, I'm going to share just a short short message. It's thundering out there. I don't know if you can hear it or not. But by the grace of God, we'll get this video out. Amen. Amen. We love you guys. Blessings. Guys, these are the last days. What can I say? It's like this. Jesus is coming. The devil knows his time is short. And he's doing all he can to, to stop the, the word of God from being heard. Amen. If Satan wanted something from us, would we give it to him? That's a serious question. Let's talk about that. Guys, whether we like it or not, every Christian must come to terms with the fact that there is a real enemy. He's known by many names, including Satan, Lucifer, Beelzebub, and the devil. He made it clear from his first encounter with mankind in Genesis chapter 3 that he has nothing but malicious intent for God's creation. So much so that Jesus says this regarding the devil's character. He was a murderer from the beginning and has nothing to do with the truth because there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks out of his own character for he is a liar and the father of lies. And that's found in John eight forty four. But in other words, there is no truth, no good, no love, and no hope that can come from the devil. When we allow the words of the enemy to have power in our lives, we come into agreement with things that directly oppose God's word. The devil's desire is to kill, steal, and destroy anything that brings God glory, including bringing to destruction to mankind themselves. And here are a few things that Satan wants more than anything else, and he wants us to give it to him, guys. The thing he wants from us is to doubt God's word. Guys, we're not going to we're not going to help him out. Amen. Satan showed his greatest trick during the first encounter with mankind in the first five verses in Genesis chapter 3. And they are, uh, verse 1 says, Now the serpent was more crafty than any other beast of the field that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, Did God actually say, You shall not eat of any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, We may eat fruit from the trees in the garden, but God did say, You must not eat fruit from the tree that is in the middle of the garden, and you must not touch it, or you will die. You will not certainly die, the serpent said to the woman, for God knows that when you eat from it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Well, guys, the first mistake Eve made was when God talked to Adam, he he told Adam he must not eat from the tree. And then, of course, when Adam told Eve, he, he added another man-made rule. You may not eat of the tree or even touch it. Guys, now mankind had twice as many rules. Sounds about like man-made traditions of today, amen? But the fact is, they did eat. They did eat. And, and, and sin has been present ever since. But guys, Satan has been convincing people to doubt God's word since the beginning of time. To this day, the enemy has convinced people to doubt the inerrancy of the Bible and even the promises that are listed in his word. Many have become skeptics and spend more time trying to prove God wrong than accepting God's love for them. By doubting even one word of what God has spoken, we start to second guess all of the things that have been said. Just like 
faith can move mountains. One seed of doubt can spread like an infection across entire families, causing many to stumble, just like we see in the Garden of Eden. Above all else, we must remember that God does not lie. In uh, Numbers 23, verse 19, it says, God is not human that he should lie, not a human being that he should change his mind. Does he speak and then not act? Does he promise and not fulfill? Guys, God does not lie. Another thing Satan wants from us is, is to allow us to allow him to paralyze us with fear. Are we going to give it to him? Prayerfully not. But there are many that struggle with extreme fear and panic attacks at the slightest scare. I believe it's safe to say that fear can keep one's eyes on things that are immediate and not on God. How do I know? Because I've been there and done that. Guys, if our lives have become riddled with fear, we will find that we are consumed with the what-ifs of life. Guys, we can soon become so focused on what we can and cannot control versus putting complete faith in God. Guys, I've been guilty of all this. I think I'm preaching to myself today, but hang with me. Guys, fear will keep us from taking a step of faith into a new direction. We're praying for a friend who may reject us, and even being able to rest. God does not give us fear. Instead, his word brings peace, wisdom, love, and a sound mind. Guys, another thing the devil wants from us is to stop us from sharing the gospel. You know, a Christian who hoards the gospel to themselves is an ineffective Christian. One of our primary roles as a follower of Christ is to make more followers of Christ. Guys, that's the great commission, to go ye into all the world. Yet, one trick of the enemy is to silence Christians. You know, we can see this in modern social media. Many Christians feel nervous to share God's word for fear of being virtually attacked or not wanting to be associated with the church. Although we cannot give the enemy 100% credit for this, uh, truthfully, truthfully though, there are those who share the gospel in a way that is malicious and hateful and, and, and they have played a big role. You know, some people will attack you with the word of God in a bad way. But we can see how many Christians prefer to worship quietly just to not to offend anybody. Guys, that's not what God wants, amen. Yet followers of Christ should take every moment they can to spread the gospel. When we shrink back from doing so, the enemy wins. If we aren't being an influencer, influencer for Christ, the enemy will certainly find opportunities to influence those around us. Let us no longer be ashamed to share the gospel by any means, guys, and by any means necessary. Let's remember Romans 1.16 that says, For I am not ashamed of this good news about Christ. It is the power of God at work, saving everyone who believes, the Jew first and also the Gentile. Another thing Satan wants from us is for us to live in shame. Oh boy, the devil loves to remind you of your past indiscretions or current insecurities. That's just another scheme of the enemy, guys. In fact, if the enemy can convince you that your past has disqualified you from receiving God's love or grace, you will never come to accept the word of God fully. In this manner, you will remain defeated and frustrated, only accepting some of God's word. Guys, shame keeps our eyes focused on ourselves. 
reminding us over and over of what we did wrong or how we didn't measure up. Truthfully, the enemy has no issue reminding you of these things and making you feel like you aren't worthy to worship God. He wants you to feel like you're not worthy to do things that God has called you to do. He wants you to feel unworthy where you cannot receive promises. The devil wants to uh, terrorize you and intimidate you and make you feel like that God is nowhere around when in reality God is always present with us. Amen. Even more so, this shame will keep you from pr praying to God and even sharing the gospel with others. If the enemy can keep us in our self-pity, I'm preaching to myself, there's no way we can ever fully walk in God's peace, guys. Remember, we are not a sum of our past behaviors. Instead, when we make a choice to turn away from sinful desires and walk towards God's love, he will show us how to live a life that is rewarding and where we can be free from condemnation. You know, in Romans 8, 1, it says, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Another thing Satan wants from us is for us to be deceived. Guys, Deception is all around the world in the last seconds of the last days. Uh, oh, glory. The great delusion is running rampant. But uh, Satan does want God's children to be deceived. You know, it has never been more important for Christians to stand on the Word of God. In today's culture, we see so many accommodating the word to fit their lifestyle instead of accommodating their lifestyle to fit God's word. This form of trickery is Satan's attempt to make Christians pick and choose which aspects of the Bible make them feel good. And I might add, there's people that are picking and choosing from the Bible what what they're saying it's true, and then they're picking and choosing and, and saying some of these things in the Bible are not true. Oh, wow, guys, that blows me smooth away. The Bible is the inerrant word of the living God. There is not one lie in the word of God. Guys, instead of seeking a life that follows the Spirit, many are looking to their own flesh and concept of morality to find truth. In many ways, they've become like Eve, wanting to only accept portions of God's word, but preferring our will over his. We must remember that Satan will do anything to cause confusion, including using Christians with so many different beliefs that it appears to be dozens of dis different religions mixed into one. We must know that anything we believe that contradicts the word of God is simply another ploy of the enemy. Guys, let us not give the enemy any more power over our minds and action, and let's walk fully in God's word. In 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 3 and 4, it says, For the time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching, but having itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own passions and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander off into myths. Guys, I can see that happening today. Although the devil has plans uh, and wants for us to live in fear and pain, our God has a greater plan. And I love the book of Jeremiah chapter 29, 11, that says, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Some translations say, For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, 
They are plans for good and not for disaster to give you a future and a hope. Guys, that expected end that's mentioned is one of victory. Victory. I believe I want what God wants for us. Amen. He wants us to abide in a victorious lifestyle that God himself designed for us to live. Guys, I know we often develop strategies, game plans, life plans, and then at some obstacle or critical point, we, we, when we come to one of those points, uh, we need to set our face like a flint. We just need to say, just stick to the plan. God's plan. You know, life is always sending unexpected surprises. But praise God, nothing takes him by surprise. He's the master planner. Our family might turn against us. Our friends might let us down. We might find ourselves with an illness or affliction and problems and situations on every side. But God still has a plan for you and for me. Just remember Joseph. Joseph is a prime example of life's surprises. It took 13 years of endurance and character building for him to fulfill this part of God's plan. Joseph was sold as a slave into Egypt by his own brothers and betrayed and imprisoned. He, he must have wondered a lot where God was and what he was doing. I know for a fact many are feeling that they cannot feel the presence of God. And I'm sure Joseph for 13 years probably felt the same. But you know what? God is there. He is with you. He will never leave you or forsake you. But guys, finally, Joseph has a prepared vessel. He was placed in the highest position in the land, second only to Pharaoh, and commissioned to execute God's plan for saving the world from famine. So the Lord always has surprises of his own. The next time the devil tries to surprise you with a problem, just say, I'm going to let the surprise God has for me just overtake that uh, illegitimate evil surprise from Satan. Glory to God. God has plans for us to walk in victory. But when Joseph revealed himself to his brothers, he summed it all up beautifully. In Genesis chapter 50, verse 20, it says, You intended to harm me, but, but God, but God intended it for good in order to bring it about as it is this day to save many people alive. Guys, when our situations are difficult to handle and downright impossible to explain, we need to remind ourselves that God said, I know the plans I have for you. Through these situations, we discover how faithful and sovereign our God truly is. He knows what we can handle, and he will never give us more than we can handle. When the test is completed, we come out with character, stronger in faith, more in love, more useful to him, and, <laughs> and by the way, guys, ready, and we come out ready for our next test. Oh, glory, help us, Lord. Guys, the fact that we have problems is a sign that we also have a promise. It's only a matter of time before God reveals his good intentions. So until then, let's stick to the plan. Let's stick 
to the plan, guys. And I am referring to God's plan. Let's remain Jesus strong. Guys, just look around you. The world is falling apart, but it's actually God's plans falling together. We're getting ready to rapture out of this place. We're getting ready to rapture out. Jesus is getting ready to step down on a cloud and give the very clear command to come up hither. Guys, let's keep walking in victory. If we feel defeated by faith, let's rise up and see ourselves already on the other side as victorious champions for Christ. Guys, my wife and I love you. We pray for you every day. Oh, and we're getting ready to see you in the clouds. God bless each of you so very abundantly. And Maranatha. Father, heal each one within the sound of our voice, God. Fill them with hope. Fill them with health. Fill them with supernatural strength, O oh God. And if any one of them needs to become born again, save them to the uttermost. Lord, when we are weak and weary, help us to remember from where our hope truly comes. By your grace, keep us from misplacing our faith in worldly things for support. Strengthen us to endure all hardships with confidence, knowing every promise you made will come true. We ask you would rise within each of us and empower us 
to live better and never bitter. Amen. Be our shalom peace. Keep us within your secret place, high above all turmoils of life. Be God our healer. We ask when we are sick, you would saturate each of us with the healing balm of Gilead, causing us to be free from all pain and sickness. Be God our deliverer and free us from all bondages and evil of this world. We ask you would always restore, renew, and revive each of us all the days of our lives. Be our strength when we're feeling we cannot go on. Free us from the weight of all worry and fear. Give us rest from the struggles we daily encounter that are wearing us down. We will remember that you, Lord, are with us. You are here. You are powerful. And you are in control. Thank you, Lord, that we can put our hope in you because you are our hope. Though the world may be falling apart all around us, we will yet praise your name. We will say of the Lord, he is our refuge and our fortress. Our God will always be our wraparound shield all the days of our lives. You are our Savior. You are our God. Yes. Thank you, Lord, that we can always turn to you and find peace. Be our peace today and always. Thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayer. And we will believe by faith that all these things are done in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Guys, we can talk a little bit about the gospel that's found in 1 Corinthians 15, verses 1 through 4. Verse 1 says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I have delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures. Verse 4 says, And that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the Scriptures. Amen. Guys, those are shouting words. Yes, they are. I'm just going to turn it over to Susie and let her present the ABCs of salvation. Hallelujah. And how many know that salvation is as easy as ABC? Yes, it is. The ABCs of salvation. A, admit that you are a sinner in need of a Savior. This is where the godly sorrow leads to genuine repentance for sinning against the righteous God. And there is a change of heart. We change our mind and God changes our hearts and regenerates us from the inside out. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins and was buried and that God raised Jesus from the dead. This is trusting with all your heart that Jesus Christ is who he said he is. Call upon the name of the Lord. In Romans 10, 9, it says, If you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and will believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Every single person who has ever lived since Adam will bend their knee and confess with their mouth that Jesus Christ is the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. If you want to become born again today, then say something like this, Lord, you said in your word that if I confess with my mouth, Jesus is Lord and believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead, that I would be saved. I confess now that Jesus is my Lord and I believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead. For it is with my heart I believe and am justified and it is with my mouth that I confess and I am saved. As the scripture says, anyone who trusts in you will never be put to shame. You said that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. 
Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me and cleansing me and forgiving all my sins, past, present, and future, and for giving me eternal life. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. If you have prayed this prayer, you are now a child of God. Old things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. Welcome to the family of God. Amen. Amen.